Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify um, complex numbers when they are raised to a higher power. So basically, to, when we're understanding complex numbers, and especially raised to a higher power, we need a kind of way to really you know, understand, again, what complex numbers, you know, one, not only represent, and then two, kind of follow along the pattern for uh, complex numbers raised to a higher power. So first of all, we're going to start with i, which is our imaginary unit. Now, we bring up i because to represent our complex numbers, we've got to have an imaginary unit. And i basically represents the square root of negative 1. So we like to replace whenever we're simplifying you know, problems with the square root of a negative number, we're usually going to use i. Now, if I have i squared, basically what I have is I am going to have um, i squared um, squared. So basically, you can take that and take i to negative second, and then go ahead and square that. Well, obviously, the square root of negative 1 uh, squared is just going to leave us with negative 1. So therefore, i squared equals negative 1. Now, if I was basically going to do i cubed, I could basically go ahead and follow that and say, well, that's going to be i squared times i. Whereas we know that i squared is negative 1 times i is just going to leave us with a negative i. So therefore, i cubed is equivalent to negative i. And then if we go to i to the fourth, we could rewrite that as i squared times i squared. Well, we know that i squared is negative 1 times negative 1, and that's going to equal a positive 1. Okay. Now, as we start, so we kind of got the basics here. We know at least what i is. We have i squared, we have i cubed, and we now have i to the fourth. And what happens is, what we notice is once we start going up to higher orders, you know, to the fifth and to the sixth, what we notice is that there's going to be a pattern that's going to emerge. i to the fifth, we can again rewrite that as simply just i to the fourth times i, or like i to the first, right? Whereas we know i to the fourth in reality is just 1. So it's 1 times i. So therefore, we could say i to the fifth is equivalent to i, which in reality takes us back to the front here, right? which we know is the same thing as the square root of negative 1. If we do i to the sixth, I can rewrite that as i to the fourth times i squared. Well, again, we already know i to the fourth is 1, and i squared is i to the fourth is 1, and i squared is going to be negative 1. So that takes us to negative 1 which, if you guys notice, i to the 6 is negative 1. That is the same thing as i squared. So if we were to continue to i to the 7th, i to the 8th, and so forth, following this pattern, you would just be able to see that they start repeating itself. Okay? So every fourth, it starts a rip repetition. So I'm going to go and skip i to the 7th and see if we can start thinking about what i to the 8th would be. Well, hopefully, you could try it out. You could rewrite it as i to the 4th times i to the 4th. But hopefully, you would recognize that um, if i to the 7th would give us negative i, so therefore i to the 8th is just going to leave us with 1. Now, that's a pretty fun pattern to kind of follow. We just know it goes from i to negative 1 to negative i to 1. Then it repeats to i to negative 1, negative 1 to i. And, that, and that's very fine and dandy, and you can keep on following that. However, in this next set of examples, what you notice is I start quick, quickly getting to my higher powers very, very quickly. And just to write out you know, the pattern all the way up to, say, 120 um, could be a very big task. So there's something we want to think about, maybe another easier way that we could do this. And basically, what I want you to understand is you know, we know that every fourth, um, every time it gets to the fourth power, it go ahead and repeats. So every really fourth, every single time we have i to the fourth, it's really just redundant, right? We don't really need to have i to the fourth because i to the fourth we know is always 1. So that's always redundant. So basically, the trick that we can kind of do is we don't really care how many i to the fourth there are. We only care about what is going to be the remainder at the end. So what we can do is really rewrite our terms in terms of i to the fourths. So we could think of this as i to the fourth times i to the fourth times i to the fourth times i, right? To i to the first. So because we know i to the fourth is always 1. So 1, 2, 3. And therefore, i to the 13th is going to be equivalent to i. Now, is there another way than writing out as many i to the fourths? Again, I go back to my example, i to the 120th. 
how many i to the fourth is that? Well, if you think about that, how many times am I going to have to raise i to the fourth to get into 120? And basically, mathematically speaking, what you simply need to do is just divide your power by 4. You doesn't really matter how many times. It doesn't matter if 4 goes into 13 three times. It doesn't matter if it goes um, 120. It doesn't matter if it goes in there 20 times. All you care about is what is the remainder. Well, 4 goes into 13, yeah, 12 times. Uh, I'm sorry, three times, but it has a remainder of one. And that's where we got our i to the first, and that's where we get our answer. So rather than trying to count out how many i to the fourth, let's just simply divide 25, um, 4 into 25. How many times does 4 evenly go into 25 without, with, in, before adding our remainder? Well, we know it goes into there six times. Therefore, I could rep write a repetition of i to the fourth six times, but that would give me 24, meaning I'm going to have a remainder of 1. So therefore, i to the 25th basically just do 25 divided by 4, and that equals 6 with a remainder of 1. Well, that 1 is what's going to be on my power. So that's i to the first, which is just i. So these, i to the 13th and i to the 25th, are equivalent to, say, i to the fifth, or just i. Now let's go and get into a little bit higher numbers. What about 42? How many times does i divide into 42? Well, we know 10 times 4 is 40. So i goes into there 10 times, which would be 40. But then we have to go two more, so the remainder is going to be 2. So 40 divided by 10, or divided by 4, is going to be 10 with a remainder of 2. So i to the 40th is equivalent to um, i squared. I'm sorry. So you take. Whatever your remainder is, and that's going to be the power of i, which i squared we know is equal to negative 1. All right, let's go ahead and get into 58. Well, um, 58, let's see, we know 4 goes into 40 10 times. Um, and therefore, let's see here, you know that if you go, that would be 40. Well, if you add 16 to that, that would be 56, because 4 goes into 16 4 times. So therefore, that would be 10. So 14 times 4 is going to be 56. Um, so therefore, I am going to have a remainder of 3. So 59 divides by 4. Um, again, what did I say that would be 10? 14 equals 14 with a remainder of 3. So therefore, this is equivalent to i cubed, which i cubed, though, we represent as just simply negative i. Uh, if we go ahead and get into 70, um, that would be 30 plus 40. No, that's not going to work. Um, but we know 40. Eh, let's get into it. Um, let's go 17. Uh, 17, or 7 times 4, is going to be 28. Add that to 40, that's going to be 68. So therefore, we have 71 divided by 4 is going to give us 17 with a remainder, that'd be 68, with a remainder of 3. So therefore, this is also equivalent to i cubed, which is just negative i. Um, 80, we know that 4 divides into 80 it would be 20 times with a remainder 2. So that's going to give us i squared, which is equal to negative 1. I thought I did another one of these. Oh, i to the 8th is equal to 1. Then we go to i to the 20th. Well, again, I, 4 divides into 40. 4 divides into 80. And 4 is then also going to divide into 120. So it divides into there evenly, that many um, evenly, four times. So therefore, there's going to be no remainder. So it's i to the fourth. Or you could say the remainder is 0. So i to the 0, which either way you want to write it, i to the fourth is equal to 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is also equal to 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you rewrite complex numbers to a higher power. Thanks.